Hello everyone, my name is uh, Nishant and welcome to my uh, poster presentation. Firstly, it's a great privilege to be presenting in this uh, uh, conference. So uh, I'm currently working at uh, Prefix uh, Tapes Limited on an automated uh, rescheduling project in partnership with uh, University of Brighton. So in my short presentation, I will be uh, covering the work I'm doing at uh, Parafix, giving you an overview of the work here at Parafix and the challenges uh, we are facing in, in uh, data collection and then to build uh, the machine learning model based on the data which we will be uh, collecting. And so these are the three points. Uh, which I will be covering in this uh, presentation, work at Prefix challenges and machine learning application. So first, a brief uh, 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 information on, on, on our company, uh, Prefix States Limited. So we are a UK-based company. We specialize in uh, producing self-adhesive tapes, uh, foams and other flexible materials in different shapes and sizes according to our customer requirements. So uh, we use uh, machines here, which are uh, uh, converting uh, uh, and die cutting machines. Uh, we uh, use rotary die cutting machines. These machines are run by the uh, operators. These machines can be servo controlled or electro electric motor control. So the key part in this uh, uh, machine is is the tool. So as you can see, this is the tool station. And these are the two uh, clamping points where the operator will actually apply the force on the tool so that it then start die cutting uh, the, the material, which will come on to the uh, uh, rewind end. And that is the final uh, 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 part, which we then supply to the uh, customer. Now, what actually happens is that in, in these two, uh, these are the two clamping points. So if uh, the challenge is if that, if too much pressure is applied, then it would uh, uh, blunt the tool. So it reduces its sharpness. And when there is no, not much pressure applied on the, on the tool, then it won't cut the, uh, cut the material as you can see. So, uh, the force applied on the tool is a key part of collecting the data to uh, predict uh, the remaining tool life uh, in, in this project. So what we did is that we applied, uh, we installed uh, pressure sensors on these two uh, clamping points, which applies force on the tool. So a bit more uh, detail on the uh, pressure sensor. So what I will, you can see the video here, as you can see here that we have this uh, tool station and there's the tool. So there are like two tools, as you can see here, tool rota uh, rotating in between the two other clamping points. You can see where the, the pressure is applied and here the, the material being dacked is coming through. These are the pressures. So here you at the top, you have got the gear side and at the bottom, you have got the gear side pressure. So these, if I go a bit back, uh, so these are the two uh, clamping points. And this is the part where we have actually uh, installed the uh, pressure sensor. So in this, but we have got the pressure sensor installed inside here. So this pressure sensor, some of the feature, it has got an output signal of two millivolt per volt, and it has a sampling rate of 9,000 Hertz, and it can withstand a pressure of up to 2,250 PSI. So right now, what it is helping us is that it is helping us in two ways. First, the before uh, before the uh, pressure sensor was installed and the 
operators didn't knew that how much pressure they has they have applied on the tools. So with with this system, they know that how much pressure they have applied from here. And the second advantage is that we can we are starting to collect data on the pressure applied on the tool. So in so that we can in, uh, build a, a prediction uh, a model to predict at what pressure uh, the tool needs to be sent for uh, refurbishment or replacement so that we can stay ahead of the game and can make more uh, predictive uh, scheduling in, in, in our planning and scheduling uh, operations. The next slide. So some of the data which we have collected. So we have collected 2,601 census samples. What we have uh, collected is that we have collected the gear side and near side pressures, the two uh, clamping points. One is called the gear side and the other is called the near side pressure. It's a telecount, which is the number of meters going through that uh, tool uh, and the parts count the number of parts that tool is making and the speed. So as you can see here, we have uh, drawn out, uh, used the principal component analysis to draw out these three uh, areas uh, there to map out the uh, clusters. So as you can see, there is a good separation uh, of these clusters and these clusters are uh, mapped out over the over three day period. So the data has been collected for over a three day period. So as the, you can see, there's a gap in between these three. So it gives us a good uh, foundation to build a prediction uh, model for, for tool like prediction. Now the challenge which uh, is, is the sensor noise because these uh, pressure sensor, these industrial pressure sensor, they also come with electrical noise. And as you can see uh, over the three day period, and when the, uh, machine has been at rest, tool has been at rest, there still has been a fluctuation like from 264 to 276, so like uh, 12, P, uh, 12 PSI, uh, uh, a difference uh, that that fluctuation which we observe. So we will also use conformer prediction to handle such uncertainty. So our plan is, is that right now, we another challenge is that we don't have uh, enough data to uh, predict tool life, but over the next 12 months, we are going to keep on collecting data on that machine and uh, the, uh, whatever the tool goes on to that machine. And we will uh, divide our work into two stages. The first stage, we will train a confirmer predictor to output a prediction region, which can be divided into clusters each cluster will correspond to a different stage in the tool life. So uh, for example, A will be a brand new tool, B lightly used, C well used, and the final one needs replacing. And in the second stage, then we will build a predictive model to estimate if the tool needs to be replaced within a given time frame using the clusters generated in the first stage. So potential method is based on nearest neighbors. Firstly, given a new sensor sample of the cutting tool in an unknown stage, and then k nearest data points will be identified. And then a majority vote will decide which cluster the new sample should belong to. For example, we have got 10 nearest data points. Eight of them are saying that uh, the cluster a, it is like F. cluster B, let's say it is lightly used and the remaining two belong to the well-used cluster. So from that, we can say that the tool will is still in that lightly used uh, cluster. So how we are going to verify our results? We are going to verify our results against the ground truth labels obtained uh, manual, uh, manually by the machine operator because the operator will tell us that yes, the uh, in actual, the material, uh, the tool is not able to cut the material more and if more, and it needs to be replaced or repurbished. And that's where we can verify our uh, prediction model. So 
so yes uh, that's it for me uh, ag again thanks very much for for uh, attending this presentation and listening to it so yes thanks very much <laughs>